Good morning, everyone. Aren't you glad to be in God's house today? I am especially grateful. Somebody said, Happy Sabbath. If you've never heard that, that is an old greeting that simply means welcome to the memorial to creation. It means welcome to the rest that God gave us at the very beginning. And so I want to welcome you here. For those of you that are watching online, make sure you let me know where you're watching from. I want to give you a shout out a little bit later on. Super grateful for your presence here. And uh, for those of you that are in this place, I want to say welcome. If I were in France or in a French-speaking country, I would say bon sabbat. If I were in a Spanish-speaking country, you want to try that? Any French speakers here? Any, any, any French speakers? No? Okay, well, any Spanish speakers here? It's bon sabbat. Did I get it right? Bon sabbat. If there are any uh, Spanish-speaking persons, we would say feliz sabado. Any, any Spanish-speaking persons here? Feliz sabado. So feliz sabado to you. Uh, if I were in, a, in a, uh, a Jewish community, I would say Shabbat shalom. That means Sabbath peace. Shabbat shalom. And so I'm so grateful that you're here. We're going to have our welcome. Who's bringing our welcome now? Come on up. Let's give our welcome. Let's give these young ladies a hand. And then we're going to go into our hymn of worship immediately following that. You got to do better than that. They need to know you really appreciate them. I think y'all are ready to clap today. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, Enter unto his gates with thanksgiving, and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. We, we, are, delighted. we are delighted that you chose to worship with us in person or online. We pray that you will be blessed. We hope that you know that you are loved as we worship and praise God together this Sabbath. On behalf of Shiloh Church, welcome. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. You know, the scripture says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep as some souring without hope. But our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 214, which says, we have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord. Let us all stand at this time and rejoice as we lift the rafters and let all of the south side of Chicago, everybody in Park Manor and Grand Crossing know that we have a hope, amen, amen. To our hymn number 214. Yeah. 
united in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are united. We are united in his love. Come on, come on now, come on now. Love for the love for the waiting people of the world. People who people who need. Come on, come on, come on. Heavens will open wide, Christ alone will claim its pride. All the universe will sing, come on, hallelujah, Christ is King, come on. We have this hope that burns with And you may be seated. everyone. Um, before I begin the children's story, I would love to see some children come up front first. So what's that age, Pastor? Uh, 12 and under, 13 and under. If you're 13 and under, come on up. And you know I will call your name. So just come on up. Be good little students. We're back in school. be happy that you came. So I just want to start off by giving a testimony. This week, I started back going to work over the summer. I teach as kindergarten. And I thank God he got me through this week. It was very productive. And I, my kids, uh, which we call scholars, they knew the routines. They started learning all of those things and transitions. So we have what we call morning meeting. <clears throat> and one day this week, I believe it was Thursday, and uh, I said my favorite day, one of my favorite days of the week is Friday. And I said, you know why? And they were like, no. I said, because Man, I get two days off, and you all get two days off, and I don't have to see your faces, and you don't have to see mine. And I said, doesn't that sound good? And one of the gir little girls raised her hand, and she said, well, Miss Williams, I enjoy school. And she started tearing up and saying, and you said, you, you'll be happy if you don't see us for two days. And I like school, and I want to come back, and I love my teachers. So, of course, <laughs> it took me away, and I was like, I said, come on up. So she came up, and uh, I usually do this, and I say, erase what I said. So everybody erase what I said. And I put my hand on her back because she stood next to me. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. I said, well, what I was trying to say is I really like Friday because I get a break and I get some days off. I get to see my families, my boys, my husband, and don't you guys want to spend time with your family? So as I was talking to her, I took my hand off and put it back on my lap. She said, but, and next thing you know, as she was saying, but I do like my, she took my hand and put it right back on her, 
on her back. And I was like, oh wow, this really made my week to know that this scholar feels so comfortable and feels so safe with me and that she can say, I love school, and I just had to share that testimony, and it taught me that I need to filter what I say around scholars, around little people. So let us pray for our children's story real fast. Lord God, use me today. Speak through my words. Speak through, speak through me. Use me for your service through this children's story. In Jesus' name, amen. So, it's so good to see some of you here, boys and girls. Oh, let me take something out. This coffee filter can teach us a really very important lesson on how to live a better life, okay? Do you know what this coffee filter, how it works? Anyone of you know how it works? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. So first, you place this filter inside of a very special bowl that comes with the coffee pot. Then you take some coffee grinds and you place them into the coffee filter. And the way it works, the coffee maker makes like it, it pours if you pour hot steaming water over the grounds, the actual coffee flavored water will come through, but not the coffee grounds. And if you ask anyone who drinks coffee, and I'm looking around, <laughs> it's one thing they will surely tell you that they do not like. They do not like to see coffee grounds in their coffee, okay? That being said, it's the job of the filter to keep them out. Echo, see if they caught it. I want you to repeat after me. It's the job of the filter to keep the rounds out. There are many kinds of filters. There are furnace filters, and they keep the dust out of the air we breathe. There are gas filters, and they keep our gas, they keep our uh, gas in our cars clean, okay? So although there are lots of different sizes, different shapes of filters, and they do all kinds of things, there's one thing that they all have in common. I want you to repeat after me what it is. They filter out something that shouldn't be let through. Now with that being said, boys and girls, you and I are like filters. Did you know that? You did, Anthony? All right, you're smart. That's right. God wants us to filter all different things we hear, see and think. For instance, when you go to school, you may hear some kids say some bad words, right? So, should you keep those words flowing in your mind and let them, let them settle there? Of course not. You should filter those out and go, and you should also go ahead and think, hmm, that's not something I should say. Also, when you see someone doing something wrong, and you know it's wrong, should you, in a sense, go ahead and do it just because they did it? Not at all. I'm sure you realize that wouldn't be right, because it's not. You must filter out and say, this is not what I want to do because I know it's wrong. And that is something we want to do even as adults. And when you think a bad thought and you can use your filter that's inside of you, and that filter that we have is the Holy Spirit. So we want to make sure, just tell yourself, I'm not going to keep thinking that bad thought because they come. 
but I'm going to think about something else. Boys and girls, just as the filter won't let coffee grinds get into, the, into a coffee uh, pot, so you and I should filter out things that come our way that we know that's not good and only accept those things that we are to have in our heart that's good and pleasing to God. Amen. So be a good filter and not a bad filter. What kind of filter will you be? Good. A good filter. So before we have uh, read our Bible verse, I'm going to choose someone to come up and have our closing prayer. Okay. Samini, would you like to come up and have our closing prayer? It's the only volunteer. Would you like to? Because I see a hand. Anthony, come on up. May you please wear your hands and close your Before we have prayer, though, we're going to read the scriptures together. Sorry about that, okay? Let's see if they're going to put that up again for us. All righty, let's read our scripture. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4, 8. May you please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please help us to have a good Sabbath. Please help us to do what's right in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You guys can return to your seats. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Let's be filters. How many of you uh, get in trouble for not filtering what you say? All right, so that was good for all of us. Uh, we only got five honest people in the church. Uh, but uh, for those of you that were honest, we're gonna, we're gonna, you can skip communion at the end of the quarter. But for the rest of y'all, I'll see y'all at the foot washing. All right. But uh, today, listen, I, I have been so excited to get here today because there are some magnificent announcements. And I've been praising God all week about what he has been doing. On last Saturday night, our church decided unanimously to provide a need-based scholarship for any child up to the full capacity of our school, any child that needs it. That's powerful. I, th I, th I think that's a praise the Lord. Uh, some, some people will have access to 100%. Others may not need it. But somebody may say, I only need 80%. And we're, we're prepared to go all the way. And let me tell you, God has been faithful. I've had calls from all over the country. And right now, I want to encourage you, if you know children in this community, uh, or can get to the school every day because we don't have a transportation system right now. We want to encourage you say, look, don't let tuition stop you. We will find a way. Isn't that how it used to be back in the day? And so we want to encourage you to please let our school know. Reach out to our office and we'll uh, work through that. I want to bring up someone who is so, so, uh, just such a brilliant light in the world. Miss Melissa Moore from Child Impact International. And she's got a gift that she's going to share with us and a few announcements. But come on, do better than that. Welcome our guest. Come on up, Sister Moore. When she saw what Shiloh Church was doing for our school, she and the team at Child Impact International, Dr. Tom Evans, they sat down together and they said, we have to do something. We have to do something. So yesterday, she landed in Chicago. They called me on Wednesday, and on Friday, she was in Chicago. I know y'all are Adventists, so I ain't gonna ask y'all to shout. At least y'all can clap. I'll shout. I'll shout. She came two days later. She said, if Jesus can do something in three days, let's see what we can do in two. 
And so she showed up, and yesterday she took a tour of the South Suburban School because on behalf of Child Impact, they're trying to find how they can help uh, what's happening in the South Side of Chicago. She took a tour of the South Suburban School and met with the school board chairperson there. Then she spent the afternoon. Uh, our principal from Chicago Seventh-day Adventist Christian School took her to lunch, and we're going to pay the lunch bill. Amen, somebody. So y'all see the receipt on the report. We're going to pay for that sole vegetarian. And uh, she took her to lunch, and she took a tour of our school. And today, she'll look at our parsonage. She'll look at the lower level of the school. And that's what people who serve do. They find ways forward. So Sister Moore, why don't you come and greet us in your own way? Thank you all for having me. Um, I did get up very early yesterday morning to catch a direct flight, thank you, Lord, from Chattanooga um, to come and uh, spend this weekend with you all. So thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here and share a little bit with you. Um, so I just want to give you guys a little bit of information about Child Impact. Um, is this working? Oh, there we go. So first of all, the reason why we care about doing the work that we do is this verse right here. Defend the cause of the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. This verse is in Psalm. It's something that I think is core to child impact and from what I've seen is core to this church, core to this school system that you are trying to serve these exact people. So Child Impact is working all over the world. These are some of the countries that you, um, you can see highlighted in orange that we're working. Um, we're excited to, on the, the next version of this map, have a little bright spot there for Chicago. So um, probably the best way that I can tell you what we're doing with um, anti-trafficking work is to tell you a quick story um, of one of our projects in Kenya. We're working in 14 countries around the world. Kenya is one of them. And I'm just going to share with you a little uh, story about a girl. Um, I'm going to call her Shan. Uh, this is her. Uh, she showed up at the Omalaika Trust uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, she had um, her parents were arrested for abuse and neglect. She was left for 10 plus hours a day. She's not quite two years old, and her parents would leave her for 10 plus hours a day um, to not only fend for herself, but take care of her three-month-old little sister. Um, my son is about six months younger than her and weighs double what she does. She's about 13 pounds, and so she is now at the Omalika Trust receiving amazing um, care to heal um, not only from physical scars, but the um, far deeper emotional scars. I don't know if you can tell in this picture, she's got a fresh scar across her forehead um, from where her father hit her with a glass bottle. Um, so these, there, there are just horrible, horrible stories all over the world, and um, we want to be a part of those. We also want to be a part of what's happening right here, and um, so I'm just going to share a few, I'm just going to connect a, a few facts here for us, and um, to explain why this partnership with Shiloh is so important to us at Child Impact. So we uh, work with anti-trafficking projects. We also do child sponsorship. Why child sponsorship? I found this wonderful stat from UNESCO that said if all adults completed secondary education, so high school, 420 million would be lifted out of poverty. That is half of the global poverty rate, just for secondary education. So if we can get these kids to just finish high school um, that would have no other chance to do that, um, we're helping to lift them out of poverty. And why might that be so important? Um, here's uh, another fact here. Those with the least education were the most easily manipulated. Both the lack of and desire for education is also a strong predictor of the susceptibility of being trafficked. So the dedication that you all have to this school system here is a direct way that you are fighting human trafficking. Empowering education is fighting trafficking. So here's um, another stat. I can't see it back there very well, but this first, the top left number right here, 51% of those who were trafficked was due to economic need. Someone said, well, I'll take care of you or, or ask the parents, you know, just sell, sell me your, your child um, so that you don't have to pay for them. Economic need was a primary driver of human trafficking. Therefore, fighting poverty is fighting trafficking. 
64% reported, uh, these are trafficking victims, 64% reported being homeless or experiencing unstable housing at the time that they were recruited into their trafficking situation. Fighting homelessness is fighting trafficking. 40% of tra sex trafficking victims in the U.S. were black, 63% of labor trafficking victims were Hispanic, and 17% were Asian. This is astounding because the black population currently in the U.S. is only 14%. Let me back up. I don't know if we've got statisticians in the room, but 40% of the sex trafficking victims were black, but they only represent 14% of the U.S. population. The Latino population accounts for roughly 18%, and Asian population only 7%. So people of color, minorities, are being disproportionately affected by trafficking. Therefore, fighting racism is fighting human trafficking. I don't know how many of you are familiar with an assessment called ACEs. It's the Adverse Childhood Experiences Assessment. It assesses 10 different metrics, and these are those right here. So these, there were children who were assessed uh, on the ACEs um, assessment. 94% of these kids who had been trafficked had an ACEs score of six or higher. So some of these, um, some of these assessment uh, items here are neglect, abuse, and so um, we can see that some of them have to do with the dysfunction of the household, and some of them are things that this child may have experienced personally. So 94% of them had an ACEs score of six or higher. So if we're fighting child trauma, we're fighting trafficking. Uh, like Pastor Boston said, I had the pleasure of going to South Suburban, and um, Miss Pam took me on a, a tour of the school yesterday. Um, I spent the afternoon at uh, Chicago SDA. You guys have a beautiful campus and beautiful people in leadership who are so, so deeply dedicated. I was so fascinated that um, both of the women that I spent yesterday with said that they had such deep roots in this church here. Um, so I was just so inspiring to see that th this is where they want to give back. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit of context of what's really on our heart at Child Impact. And I think you can tell that you know, when you look around the room or when you, when you look at yourself and, and ask you know, what's important to me and, and how are children valuable to me and how might we want to fight trafficking, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And there's a lot of ways you may already be doing that. And so we're just excited to come alongside you and partner. Um, th this church. Um, with Pastor Boston. This is our first partnership in the United States, and so we're really excited about that. So at this time, I'd like to invite a few people up, and I have a special gift for you for this church. I would love to see the head principal, uh, sorry, the head elder and the principal, our school board chairperson, education secretary, our home and school leader, the Lake Region Conference Executive Secretary, Dr. Henry, and any students that may be here from the Chicago SDA Christian School, if you would all come up. the Shiloh Church for $10,500 to support the work. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. We said if it's God, 
God's will, it'll be God's will. Praise God. We're going to have our school board chairperson and our principal come up with a few words, our head elder, and we gratefully receive this. The head elder did receive the check that will go into the bank, so we're grateful for that. But uh, we'll have our principal and our school board chair come up, and then we'll make sure we get a picture with everybody right after. And our conference executive secretary, who is an active part of the Shiloh family, and his amazing wife are here. So we'll have him give our closing remarks as we accept this. Isn't this an awesome blessing from God? You know, many times we think about what can be done in our church, in our schools. Um, we know there are a lot of ills in our community, but a lot of times it's because we lack resources. But the Bible says, if any of you lack anything, if lack wisdom, let him ask. And also, we have not because we ask not. And so we thank our impact for seeing a vision of what can be done in our school and uh, partnering with us and our church. We thank Pastor Boston for facilitating this partnership and we thank all of you for your thoughts and prayers and as we move forward we ask that you will continue to allow, uh, pray for us as that we will be able to go out into the community and reach those who may be affected by these horrible ills of the devil and we know it is nothing but the devil but God is able to deliver deliver us and move us forward, and so we just thank God for that. Amen. 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 This is so exciting, and this is only the beginning of the many blessings that God is going to unfold to us this year at Chicago SDA Christian School and also our church. do just want to say um, share this that one of the reasons that we believe in Christian education Seventh-day Adventist schools primarily focus on preparing students for not just success in their life but for eternity and that's exactly what we're doing here and we are so grateful to Child Impact International for wanting to partner with us believe in our mission to educate all children of the Lord and prepare them academically as well. We want to thank the church board and the church for agreeing and voting on providing this opportunity. So thank you all. Continue to pray for us. Shiloh is going to embark on miracles that are going to unfold unfold right in front of our eyes. So trust and believe that and keep us all in prayer and prayer for, pray for one another. Amen. Thank you. Shiloh, I just want to add to that very quickly. Uh, this is seed money. Amen. And seed money needs watering. Amen. It doesn't absolve us of our responsibilities as a church to continue to invest in our young people. So while we praise God for this, we still have a responsibility. So let us continue to invest in the young people, not just of this church, but the young people of this community that we want to serve and that we want to reach through this school next door. Thank you. And we're going to end here with our conference executive secretary. But if you all could just gather on this lower platform here, the, this is the most holy, this, uh, this holy place down here. If you all could gather down here for a picture. And, uh, and thank you, young people, uh, for holding that check up for us. And you all hold that. And you all gather around them for a picture and our executive secretary. And don't leave because then our executive secretary has another announcement. It, it may be something else. So we'll see.
Happy Sabbath, Shiloh. Happy Sabbath, Shiloh. It is great to be in the house of the Lord. What do you say? Can I get 10 people to say amen? We are excited for the amazing things that are happening at the Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Chicago Christian Academy. I want to tell you a little secret. This week, you guys have been to talk all across the North American division. We've received emails, text messages, all throughout the conference office for what Shiloh is doing. You guys are a trend-setting school and church that is making sure that Adventist education is accessible. You can have a phenomenal curriculum and phenomenal staff. But if you don't have the ability for students to attend the school, it won't do much. And so we are grateful there are conferences that have went back into strategic planning mode to see what Shiloh did so that they can do it too. And so I want to say a very special thank you to your church and your school for setting that bar high. Amen. I am so grateful for what Child Impact is doing by sowing a seed in our vineyard, but we have a responsibility as a conference, and it's our responsibility to take care of our schools. And we want you to know that while we appreciate campgrounds and many other locations that are used sometimes two weeks out of the year or a few other weeks, we have a school right here that is used five days a week that have young people who need to be educated and grow in many different ways, and we are excited today to let you know we heard your voice this past summer and the voice that was shared the remarks that were shared is is that we need to do more and I am happy to announce that our president our administrative team went right back into meetings this summer and it took a few meetings and some decisions but I am happy to announce that we did not waste any time today on behalf of our president on behalf of our treasurer on behalf of the executive committee I am happy to present the Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church with a check for $80,000. Pastor Boston, Madam Chairperson, Madam Principal, First Elder, and to all the young people, we want you to know that we stand with you guys and supporting Adventist education is much more than a liturgy and a language. It's much more than phraseology. It is action. And Lake Region Conference, we are stepping up and we are moving forward that this is not a one-time event. We are stepping forward. We have meetings planned. We have things that we're doing. We are working on making sure you don't hear the support, but you feel the support. Elder Gabriel says he's praying for you guys. He loves you guys. He wanted to be here today, but he said he is proud of what Shiloh is doing, and we mean it when we say we stand with you guys. God bless you, and we love you. May God move you guys forward. gather right down here. Put Elder Henry in the middle there. Shiloh Church, we gratefully accept this check from our conference. Let's bless the Lord for the Lake Region Conference. We are so grateful to Elder Gabriel and Dr. Henry and Elder Stonewall. We're grateful for Elder Deidre Garnett and the entire administrative committee and executive committee. And on behalf of this church, I want to say thank you to the Lake Region Conference. Aren't you glad to be a part of Lake Region? This is the time to shine right now. So thank you so much. This is uh, for capital improvement. We're going to stretch it as far as it can go, but we're going to do our gym floor. That's what, that's what this is for. We're going to get a brand new gym floor. And if we got some pennies left over, we'll put them somewhere else too. 
But thank you so much. I appreciate everybody who's organizing. Y'all are ready to praise the Lord, aren't you? I don't know what you come to do, but I come to clap my hands and I come to stop my feet. I come to praise the Lord. Let's thank God in prayer right now as our praise team is coming. Thank you all so much. You all can follow that way. Thank you so much, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace in this place. Lord, we cannot sit in this building and in our school and watch the news and see children killed on the streets of Chicago. We cannot know that 16,000 young women are put into trafficking, human trafficking, from Chicago's south side every single year and not do something. Lord, I pray that our school will be overrun with children whose pathways for success are protected by Adventist Christian education. Lord, I pray that our church will be filled with people who are overcoming addiction and those who have had to walk in from the streets of darkness. I pray, oh God, that abusers and the abused will find peace and healing and transformation in this place. Lord, I pray that for the $10,500 from Child Impact International, that you will turn it into millions in donations for them and hundreds of thousands of dollars will go to supporting children that had no other way of escape in poverty and for those that have been trafficked Lord around the world let us join the fight because that is the fight of the living King and father for the Lake Region Conference too often we focus on the fail points but God today is the success point today is the joy of being a part of this great family so we lift up Elder Gabriel and Dr. Henry and Elder Stonewall our administrators Elder Griff Dr. Deidre Garnett for education and our executive committee and God I pray that the latter days will be greater than the former days and that we will see a mighty move of God born out of this conference across this country and around the world in the precious name of Jesus we come to praise you God we praise you through depression today we praise you oh God through anxiety today we praise you through divorces today we praise you through failures today we praise you through academic soft points today we praise you no matter what's happening in the financial structures of our homes today Lord we've come to praise your holy name in Jesus' name we shout hallelujah. In Jesus' name we shout thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name.
but living the life of praise, having that faith each day that we go out from our homes, in and out, for our schools. We are so blessed and happy that we have our children. Put, we pray for our children every day as they go out for their safety, for their protection. Lord, we need to praise him, praise him.
Praise the Lord, church. I'm here holding back my tears. It is just, the Lord is so good to us. And to see when we ask for something, we had to believe that the Lord will give it to us. So we just want to praise the Lord today for his goodness. And I thank the Lord for answered prayer. Before Pastor Boston came, we have been praying for, for a pastor to come. And the Lord give us more than what we ask. And I just thank God and I pray that we will work with Pastor Boston, get out of his way, and just follow. Because the Lord is here to help us. And I say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's time to pray, and I would like for you to pray along with me that God will continue to bless us and that his Holy Spirit will dwell with us in this, in this temple. Loving Father, God in heaven, we are so thankful, dear loving Father, on this your holy Sabbath day. Lord, as you have watched over us through the week, Lord, and you bring us together, Lord, where we can come and praise your name, Lord, and to accept, dear loving Father, the new blessings that you give us every day. We thank you for your word. Your word is true. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every one that is here today, Lord Jesus, that are well enough to come to church. And for those that are watching online, Lord, we thank you for them. And we pray, dear loving Father, that they too, dear loving Father, will find the love of Jesus drawing closer to them and that they can come out, Lord, and worship with us. We thank you, dear loving Father God, for the children, Lord, next door. And I pray for those, Lord, that are waiting, Lord, for, your, for the angels, dear loving Father, to come and take them over to the school next door. I pray for the parents, dear loving Father, that their hearts will be happy. And I pray, Lord, that we will continue, dear loving Father, to lift you up. We have so many prayer lines, dear loving Father, that we are praying every day. Help us, Lord, that we will live according to the way how we pray. And that, dear loving Father, we will be obedient, Lord, and walk in your footstep because you want to come and save us. I thank you, dear loving Father, for the praise team, dear God. We thank you, dear loving Father, for all the participants on the program today. And I pray, dear God, that you would bless us. Those that are sick, Lord, you know them all by name. Every day, Lord, their names have been called. So I pray, Lord, that you will continue, dear loving Father, to heal and to bless, to sanctify our soul, dear loving Father, God in heaven. Help us, Lord, to bring everything to you in prayer and to remember not to worry about anything because you are there right by our side, Lord, to take us through this crucible that we're going through. Father, we love you so much and we bless your name. You are more than worthy to be praised. We pray for our pastor, dear God, that you would anoint him today Put the edge around him and his family, dear loving Father. And we pray, dear loving Father, God, that he will lead and live, Lord, for you. Father, we just thank you for our elders, our deacons, Lord, the members who are here every week, and the, those, Lord, that are so faithful, Lord, in tuning in. Thank you, Lord, for our visiting friends, Lord. And together, Lord Jesus, we can be one big happy family, Lord. Give us the love, Lord, that when our visitors come, Lord, they will feel at home. We thank you so much, dear loving Father God, for your house of worship where we can come. We praise your name and we bless you today as we continue, dear God, to sing, to read your psalm, Lord Jesus, and to just fellowship with each other. We pray, Lord, that we will accept your word, not to keep it to ourselves, Lord, but to go and tell others, Lord, what is happening right here at 78th and Michigan. Father, bless our school, bless our church, bless your people, and Father, we thank you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you also, dear loving Father, for the Child Impact International, dear God. I don't know why I forget. Thank you so much for the Lake Region Conference, dear God. We just thank you and we praise your name in Jesus' name, amen.
Also this morning, we're going to be favored with a selection by a pianist, accomplished musician, Mr. Eric Troy. Receive him now, please. Now, Eric, no, you're wrong for making me come preach after that. 
We, we should just all be going home and, and uh, running and leaping and praising God. That was ministry of music. Thank you so much, Doc, for doing that. Was that a blessing to your heart? How many of you saying, man, I'm glad I came to Shiloh today? I am so grateful for each of you. We're going to uh, make sure we re recognize every single one of you. I want to tell you, I had several people out in the lobby already. When you go out, take a picture with the, uh, the checks that are out there and make sure you say, praise God, Shiloh is on the move. Post it on your social media. Make sure your camera's not upside down. Make sure it's not blurry. And just uh, make sure you let everybody know. Do you know that telling the story is as important as as the story? How do we know that? Because the story of the gospel was so important that Jesus had it told four different ways in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we want you all to tell the story well. Tell this story. The Lake Region Conference blessed the Shiloh Church. Tell this story. We're partnering with Child Impact International to fight human trafficking in the third largest city in America and the largest in the North American continent. So I want to encourage you to tell that story and tell it well. The Bible is not your rehab is the title of our sermon this morning. But I've had friends from around the country and really from around the world send some special greetings to the church. And I'll make the adjustments in my sermon, but I want you all to see some of these special greetings. I want to say I apologize to Elder Curran. He told me after the sunset, we're going to have to talk. And so Elder Curran, everybody say, please forgive the pastor, Elder Curran, because I came to him at the 11th minute of the 11th hour. And Ask him to make a miracle happen, but he made it happen. He's a miracle worker. He didn't turn water to wine, but he got these videos up. And so thank you for that. We're going to show a few of these videos on the screen now. Shiloh, Dr. Myron Edmonds and um, Chaplain Myron Edmonds as well, I just want to say to you guys, I am so inspired by this vision to help little black boys and little black girls in the inner city of Chicago to experience Christian education that could literally change their whole life, mentally, physically, socially, financially. We talking about generational cycles being broken. Congratulations incredible our children our families and our communities need hope now more than ever we need christian education we're excited to celebrate with shiloh seventh day adventist church as they provide tuition free adventist education to their community they're providing hope hope for the present providing a safe and loving christian environment Hope for the future, an engaging, experiential, exciting academic program. Hope for eternity, a redemptive, loving, Christ-centered education that points our students to Jesus and the hope of eternal life. Thank you, Shiloh Adventist Church and school as you partner for eternity. Greetings, Shiloh SDA Church in Chicago SDA Academy. What a privilege it is to be able to come to you in this fashion. I am privileged to salute and congratulate you on a monumental stride. In following the admonition of the Messianic prophet Isaiah, who stated in Isaiah 54 verse 13, all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. My brothers and my sisters, I will continuously keep you in my prayers as you do what the Lord has called you to do there in his part of the vineyard. May God's richest blessings rest upon Pastor Boston and the Shiloh SDA Church. God bless. Congratulations to the members of Shiloh Church on your decision to provide an Adventist education for the children on the south side of Chicago. My prayer is that your commitment will be repeated over and over again in the congregations all across the North American Division. Thank you for loving our children. 
Hey everybody, it's Pastor William Lee, and I want to take a moment to say congratulations to Shiloh and to Chicago Elementary for making tuition free for this school year. That is huge. Praise God for the ministry that you all continue to do. We're praying for you, and we know that God is going to lead you every step of the way as you go forward. Again, congratulations. Hello, I am Claval Hunter, Director of Inner City Ministries for the Lake Region Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I want to thank the faithful members of Shallow Seventh-day Adventist Church, your visionary pastor, John T. Boston II, and the generous givers for making Christian education accessible for children in Chicago. Thank you for having the courage to act and invest in our future educators, doctors, lawyers, athletes, CEOs, pastors, community organizers. All of these young people out of future leaders of our city and our world. Your personal, prayerful, and financial commitment to their success is truly a blessing. Know that your consistent giving to Christian education is making a difference for families, our conference, and community, and more importantly, you are preparing your students for a bright future. Thank you, and God bless you. I am Pastor Tina Carragher of the First Seventh-day Adventist Church in Springfield, Tennessee of the South Central Conference. And I just want to affirm your pastor, Pastor John Boston, and congratulate you, Shiloh, on this historic vote. This is what Adventist education is supposed to be. Hello, this is Michael Nixon, VP of Andrews University, and I just want to send a huge shout out to the Shiloh SDA Church and your pastor, my friend and brother, Dr. John Boston, on offering tuition-free scholarships for students who want Christian education. This is a huge move. It's going to bless a lot of people. God bless. Hey, what's up, Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church? My name is Richie Halverson. I am friends with John Boston, and I just have to take a second to congratulate you on your bold decision to provide free Christian education to your local community. When uh, Elder Boston shared that with me, man, it gave me goosebumps. I praise God for you, and I pray you are only the first fruits of many others that are going to step out in faith and provide real ministry and opportunities and serve their local community. Friends, the enemy has invaded our cities, our communities, our families, our children, our lives, and it is past time for the church to reclaim those territories for the kingdom of God. And I praise God for how he's doing that through you. May God bless you and keep you as he continues to use you. God bless you, family. This is Pastor Michael Young, lead pastor of the City of Grace, located in Columbus, Ohio. And I want to take a moment to commend Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church, located on the south side of Chicago, and Pastor John Boston for their bold move to make tuition free for children who are in need on the south side of Chicago. In Luke chapter number 10, there's a story of the Good Samaritan, and there were three individuals who had the opportunity to do ministry to the man that was beaten up in the street. There was a priest who walked right past. There was a Levite who saw the need, but he was not willing to attend to the need, and he walked right past. But then there was a good Samaritan who was willing to go to where the man was, to pour oil and wine into the man's wounds, to put the man on the back of his horse, to take him to an end, and to put his resources behind it. The powerful thing is, is it was not just his rhetoric, but it was also his resources that he was willing to give to this man in order to bring change to his life. Shiloh and Pastor Boston are doing the same, and we're praying for you, and we commend you for it. God bless you. Hi, my name is Stephen Brawley. Director of Secondary Education at the North American Division. Ellen White says in the book Education, love, the basis of creation and redemption, is the basis of true education. This is made plain in the law that God has given as the guide of life. The first and great commandment is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. Luke 10, 27. To love him, the infinite, the omniscient one, with the whole strength and mind and heart, means the highest development of every power. The image of God is to be restored. Like the first is the second commandment. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 
The law of love calls for the devotion of body, mind, and soul to the service of God and our fellow men. The Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church in Chicago has recognized the link between love and service with their actions, bringing hope to their community. Members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church must continue to seek new opportunities to fill the needs of those in their communities, just as Jesus would. Thank you, Shiloh. May your faithfulness lead many to restoration. Greetings to my Shiloh Church family. I just wanted to take a moment and congratulate you on your decision to support Christian education by providing up to $70,000 in need-based scholarships, thereby ensuring quality Christian education, not just for our young people, but also for the young people in the community that we have been commissioned to serve. Again, thank you and congratulations for the work that was done. I pray that God will bless our efforts and continue to bless us as we endeavor to serve him. We congratulate Shiloh SDA Church in their brave initiative to provide free education for families with a demonstrated need. Thank you for casting and living out the vision. May God richly bless your commitment and generosity. Hey man, come on, praise the Lord with me. I know y'all tired of praising the Lord, but I just got reasons to praise him. I know y'all say, man, I gotta eat later. I'm just tired of praising the Lord, but I got reasons to praise him. We have one more message from Dr. Tom Evans, the CEO of Child Impact International, and we are ex ex especially grateful for their contribution to this journey, and I believe that they have ignited a vision for us to reach people that we have not considered ourselves in a position to reach before, and uh, I'm, ex I'm grateful for that. So this video is from Dr. Tom Evans, the CEO of Child Impact International. Greetings friends, my name is Tom Evans and I'm the CEO of Child Impact International. We empower through education and have a vision to help eradicate exploitation. The United Nations defines human trafficking as the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of people through force, fraud or deception with the aim of exploiting them for profit. Men, women, and children of all ages and from all backgrounds can become victims of this crime, which occurs in every region of the world. The United States is no exception. Child Impact International is engaged in the fight to protect and rescue children that are targets for this most shameful of human atrocities. Chicago, Illinois is the third largest city in America. The south side of Chicago represents one of the most economically challenged regions in the city and is often in the news for violent crimes. In Chicago, it is estimated that 16,000 young girls are being trafficked every year. That's two per hour. Child Impact is building a partnership with the historic Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church to provide need-based scholarships to private Christian education for some of the most vulnerable children on the south side of Chicago. This radical move will help in so many ways by providing a healthy, value-based environment, access to mentoring, and a network of opportunities. Our goal is to help create an environment of protection that nurtures the full potential of these children. We are grateful to the historic Chicago Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church for taking on this challenge. And we believe that this partnership will provide meaningful help for the overlooked and underserved children in Chicago's South Side that are especially vulnerable to human trafficking and exploitation. Please join us in this fight by lending your voice and resources to this life transforming and ultimately community transforming initiative. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts. Do what only you can do, O oh Lord. I pray, God, that you bring transformation to our homes and to our lives. And Lord, please don't allow us to leave this place the same way we came. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I know we've had a, a lot go on, but I'm still going to try to get you out of here by 1 o'clock. Is that all right? And we're going to let's see what we can do. I, um, I, I want you to stop at the child impact table. Make sure you take pictures. Talk to Melissa more and learn more about what child impact is doing around the world. And uh, be faithful in your giving here locally. Make sure because the church stepped out in faith. And the only way we can do this is if we contribute to a combined budget where we support all of the ministries that we can. So please make sure you're very mindful of that. What I want to do this morning is talk about, uh, if you notice, when I first got here, my first sermon was about the second coming of Jesus Christ. My second message was about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, the nature of the Trinity. I unpacked that a bit. Today I'm going to talk about the Bible. Do you know that there have been more wars fought over the Bible or under the banner of the Bible, lives lost, than any other conflict in human history? The Bible represents one of the most preserved, printed, and propagated documents on the planet, and yet it is still one of the least understood. As a matter of fact, it is the most translated work in all of human history. The only thing that can come close to it represents a fraction of the preservation that the Bible represents, and that is the Odyssey or the Iliad, 5,000 copies where the Bible has hundreds of thousands of copies that have been preserved over time. The Bible says about itself in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It would be a fallacy for a document to speak of itself. It's really a, a pretty preposterous thing to use the Bible to prove itself. So what I'd like to do this morning is talk about the power of the Bible to change lives. Do you know that the power of Christianity is not knowledge? I struggle when people say that they are Christians simply because they know. Elder Price, I may, told this story in May when I preached here for the first time in my trial sermon, because we Baptists, you know, I had a trial sermon here, Sister Kyle, and they wanted to determine if they were going to let me come back or not. But I remember, and I'm glad they made it, Sister Jones, they let me come back. I made it. You raised me right. And so with that, Sister Jones is one of our members in Atlanta, Berean, and she's here. So as long as she's around, I'm going to be all right. But what I want to point out today is that the, the Bible is actually not about information. Any wicked person can regurgitate knowledge. A wicked person can tell you what happened in 538 and 1798 and 1844. Any wicked person can tell you what the 2300-day prophecy is, or 438, I'm sorry. Any, any wicked person can recite scripture. As a matter of fact, do you know that when the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness after fasting for 40 days from food, that the devil used scripture to tempt Jesus? Any evil person can use use the Bible to beat you cross your head. But the Bible is not about information. The Bible is about transformation. The power of the Bible is not what you know. It is who you become. Young lady came, she saw that I was preaching at this church down south, and she saw the advertisement online that John T. Boston II, a product of rape who has traveled the world and worked with presidents and visited with royalty and spent time traveling with the Department of the Defense of the United States of America, rescued from a burning car, is coming to South Carolina, and you can come and hear him speak. She looked it up, and what had happened Happened like the story of young Zacchaeus or Zacchaeus the tax collector she had been speaking to the Holy Spirit in her life she found a copy of a book called The Great Controversy, and she read it from cover to cover. She ended up contacting a ministry called Amazing Facts and got copies of all of their Bible studies and completed them by mail. She didn't know that there was a church in her city that taught the Word of God. The church was absent from her life but the Holy Spirit was not. We got to stop thinking that just because we're suited and booted and we were born in this thing that we've got a, an edge on the market. This church ain't ours. It belongs to the Lord. 
And so she showed up at that presentation, and when I made an appeal, because it's not a sermon without an appeal, she came down front. When I asked if anyone wants to be baptized, she said, yes, take me to the water. The church said amen, and others joined her. And as I introduced her to the leaders of the local church, this person is responsible for this ministry, and this person is responsible for that. She said, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to serve. Put me to work. I was so discouraged, Sister Moore. I was absolutely devastated when I said she's read the great controversy. She's completed the amazing facts. She believes in the commandments of God as a protection for our grace, and she understands that Jesus is coming back, and she wants to be a part of the move of God in the Adventist church. I was so devastated. Sister Jones, when someone came to her, said, well, let's get you in Bible study and get you ready because they thought that they could do something called indoctrination for her to be a member. But my dear friend, it is not the information that will change us. We got folk that have been in the church as long as I've been alive, if not longer, and they're still as wicked as they've ever been. They're more wicked than they've ever been because they're close to the voice of God, but they don't respond to the voice of God. How do I know? Because I'm including myself. I struggle in my life. I've got to beat down the old sinful man. I've got to ask God to give me grace. I've got to look in the mirror and say, Lord, clean me up. I'm messed up, God. And so I get worried when people act like they're right because I know all of us are wrong. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. So the Bible, my dear friend, is not about information because you will not out-Sabbath keep me. You will not out-E.G. White me. You will not out to the 28 fundamentals me because I was bred in this thing. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit was bred in me. I might be in the church, but that doesn't, mean that, that doesn't mean that I don't struggle with temptation. It doesn't mean I don't get overwhelmed with fear. I've cried since I pastored this church. I've struggled in my ministry with depression and anxiety. I had to find my way through the darkness of learning that my biological mother was raped. I had to struggle with the idea of being a black man in America where we've got black and white churches and the most segregated time in America is on the weekend when people show up for worship. I had to struggle to figure out what God was going to do with my life as messed up as it is. And my dear friend, I want you to know the Bible was not my rehab. I couldn't go to the Bible and learn scripture and expect that I was better just because I knew better. I couldn't expect that I was better off than the drug addict simply because I went to church on the Sabbath and I recited the fourth commandment from heart and I knew the 23rd Psalm. And I, I remember, I, let me tell you, Brother Felix Roberts, you know how I learned the 23rd Psalm? My grandmother was born in 1898. She was crazy. I couldn't preach this last week. I got my cousins here from my mom's side this week. Last week I had my cousins from my dad's side. Y'all don't be mad at me, but my grandma on my dad's side was crazy. You had, to be born in 1898 and grow up in the South, you had to go through some trauma. And I remember one day after picking weeds in her yard that we had to pick, she said, do you know the 23rd Psalm? I said, no ma'am. She said, Negro, she didn't use that word. She said, you go back in the house and don't come out until you learn it. I don't know how you learned the 23rd Psalm, but that's how I learned the 23rd Psalm. What I want you to understand is the Bible will not change you. It is the Holy Spirit in the words that come through Scripture. The Bible is a revelation of God's character. It shows us who he is, but it is the Holy Spirit moving through the power of the record to change us. Jesus said in Matthew 4, I know you're looking at the clock. I got eight minutes to get you out by one. I'm going to get it. 
It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Listen to this, John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So follow this. You've got to have access to the word, but you've got to allow that word to have access to you. Can I preach this this morning? See, just because you open the Bible doesn't mean the Bible has opened you up. Just because you read from cover to cover doesn't mean you've allowed it to uncover you. I wish we could have some truth days in churches. I wish everybody struggling with addiction could talk about it in Sabbath school. I wish everybody struggling with something in their life could show up in church and say, I'm toe up from the flow up, but I'm here. But you let somebody start telling the truth about what's going on in their life. Well, I don't think you should serve in that position. I don't think you, let, that's not in my sermon. I preached that a few weeks ago. Let me get back here. So the Bible says in Isaiah that I am God declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. So the Bible does not have to stand on its own simply because of the power of its word. It is a testament to the power of what God will do. The power comes from the fact that God knows the end before it ever began. Did you know that the Bible talked about things in history before they ever occurred? The Bible even tell, told us things that scientists didn't even know. In Job 26, 7, the word of God says, he hangs the earth on nothing. This was nearly 2,000 years before it was discovered that the earth was not flat. It was not connected to any other celestial body, but it, orb it, it orbited around the sun on its own, on an axis, and it stood in, the, in space on on its own, but it was revealed in scripture. The Bible says that the earth isn't flat. For all you flat earthers out there, I'm gonna go with the word of God. In Isaiah 40, he sits above the circle of the earth. Before cartographers fully understood the weight and gravity of a spherical ball of blue sitting in the Milky Way galaxy amongst billions and trillions of stars and networks of galaxies throughout the universe, the word of God declared that the earth was round. The Bible says, even on issues of humanity in 3 John 1, 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers. God intends good things for you through the Bible. And he wants your soul to prosper. Your soul can't prosper if you're still bitter about what you went through last year. It's all right to mourn, but you got to mourn in the presence of the Lord so you can be comforted. Matthew 5 says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What I'm trying to tell you is that some of us have had some hurt in our lives, and we haven't overcome it, and we're blocking out what the Holy Spirit is trying to do through the power of his word. The Bible is actually 66 books. They're written on three different continents in three different languages. What are the three languages? Come on, what are the three languages? I'll give you the hardest one, Aramaic, Hebrew, and what's the last one? Greek, come on Bible scholars. I need to give out certificates every Sabbath when I preach. The Bible was written by 40 different people. Some were kings, some were shepherds, some were scientists and attorneys. There was an army general that contributed to scripture, a fisherman, priest, and even a physician. Bible was written over a period of 1,500 years. It was written on one of the most controversial subjects in history by people in most cases, most cases, not all, but in most cases who had never even met, but they were all writing about the same thing. Now we meet and we can't be on the same page. The authors 
had some of them educational backgrounds that were varied. Some had no formal education. Some had little formal education. It's almost inconceivable to think that throughout all of these thousands of years that the Bible has been preserved with all of these variables against it. Now, some of y'all can't find your birth certificate. Some of you can't find your keys. Some of you have tax documents and you're going through probate because Big Mama didn't leave a will. And that's only been a hundred years. We're talking thousands of years. But the Word of God has been preserved every step of the way. And what does the Word of God say? Beloved, I wish that you would prosper above all things. The Word of God says that God loves us with an everlasting love. The Word of God says, cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. The Bible is important because it preserves a message of the revelation of who God is towards humanity. Talking about Jesus, and I've got three minutes. I'll get you out on time if you just say amen loud enough. No, I didn't, I didn't say to say amen then. Sister Weaver, these folks saying amen because I say they getting out. They ain't spiritual. You're the only one that didn't say amen. Sister Weaver whispered under that mask, take your time, Pastor. You take your time. Then yeah, Sister Weaver stayed to have church. Y'all go out there and take pictures with them checks and stop at Child Impact. I keep on preaching. Me and Sister Weaver will get the, well, y'all got to give me 30 seconds because of what I just did. The Bible, if you were to ask the prophet Micah, he would say that, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. There is historical record that there was a Jesus called the Christ born in Bethlehem. If you were to ask Isaiah, who was a governor of Israel while they were in captivity, he said that the Messiah would be born a virgin. There is historical record, no scientific evidence, but historical record that Jesus of Nazareth, who was born in Bethlehem, was born to a woman who did not have yet a husband, and she said that an angel of the Lord said that she was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says from Jeremiah, a prophet, that Jesus, the Messiah, will be born through the lineage of David. This is hundreds of years before Jesus was born, and in fact, Jesus, the Messiah, called the Christ born in Nazareth, I mean raised in Nazareth, born in Bethlehem, was indeed born down the lineage of King David. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31 that he would be the target of a murder attempt. In Psalms 41, the Bible says he would be betrayed by a friend. Now that's most of y'all. How many of you have been betrayed by a friend? So, so, the, so the fact that there are nearly 700 prophecies about Jesus, and 100% of them came true, is an indication that God knew what he was doing. One mathematician says that the probability of this happening, this type of prediction as it relates to Jesus Christ is a one in 10 to the 18th power chance that it could ever happen. It is an impossible probability. The Bible tells us that it is the Word of God that changes us. Your Word, I'm closing now. I'm at, I've only got 40 seconds. Let's close with uh, a song, Because He Lives, or Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, or True, Softly and Tenderly. Sister Cartwright said we need some more hymns, so we'll fix her. We'll, we got to get it right, so let's do one of those. I love you, Sister Cartwright. You my favorite Cartwright in this church. When you go to Florida, I'm going to be sad this winter. The Bible says that your word is a light to my path, Psalm 119. In John 15, 11, the Bible says, These things I have spoken to you that your joy may be full. My dear friend, the Bible tells us where we came from. It tells us who we are, and it tells us where we're going in Jesus. I wanna challenge you this week to open your word every day. In the morning when you wake up, and in the evening before you go to bed, and even on your lunch break. What I want you to do is I want you to go 
to the book of Mark, the shortest gospel. And I want you to read that gospel with me this week. Let's read the whole book of Mark this week. And what I want to challenge you to do is don't ask God for anything extraordinary this week except that he would show himself to you in an extraordinary way. How many of you committed to read the book of Mark this week? You can do it. You can do it. If you have literacy issues, let us know. I'll give you access to an auto, audio Bible. If you have technology issues, you let me know. I'll read to you three times a day. I'll do it. We'll do it together. What I want to do right now, I'm keeping my word. We're closing at 1 o'clock. Somebody say amen. That pastor told the truth. He's good looking and he's a truth teller. What I want to do with you right now is I want to pray. And for some of you, you have not opened the Bible in a long time and you're missing out on power in your life. You're trying to figure out why you're depressed, why you're discouraged, why you're overwhelmed. And let me tell you something, there's power in the Word of God. The Word of God, Hebrews 4.12, is quick and it is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can get right down to the bone and the sinew of the marrow, declaring the intents of the hearts of men. My dear friend, the Word of God is powerful. And so I'm going to pray right now. And some of you, you are hearing God speak to your life. And you're saying, if, if I would, if I would have the chance, I would like to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. And I'd like to have the joy that the Word of God speaks about. Well, the Bible records stories where men and women heard the Spirit of God speak to them. And the Word came to them, what would stand between you and being baptized? One, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you are under the unction and the fire of baptism of the Holy Spirit. Two, there is the water baptism. That is going into the water and saying, I declare that I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he leads me. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person here, I want to ask that you would take their decision right now and speak to their heart. Help us reach them in the way that only really you can, and that is through their heart. Speak now, Father, in Jesus' name. As I am asking you to pray in your heart and the church is praying, there are three ways you can respond to this appeal. First, I want to encourage you to join me by reading the book of Mark. You've already responded to that. You've already said amen. I ended my sermon at 1 o'clock. This is the appeal, and I'm only going to be here for two more minutes and we'll be done. One, you're going to read the book of March. Two, you can join this local church in one of three ways. In one of three ways. You say, I want to be a part of what God is doing at Shiloh for the city of Chicago South Side. I want to be a part of that. One, you can join by transferring your membership from another Adventist church. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to come and stand with me right here and I want to pray for you, whomever you are. Two, you've been baptized by water in emergency meaning you went under the water, you received the voice of God in your life, and you simply want to profess your faith and be a part of this local church. I want to invite you to come stand with me. You need to move very quickly, whomever you are. God bless you. Our clerks are receiving you. I know you were helping me preach the sermon earlier. Have a seat right here. God bless you as you come. God bless you all as you come. There is the transfer of membership. There is the profession of faith. And then there are some of you who have not been baptized or you did not understand, like Acts chapter 21, and you, you would like to be baptized. You say, take me to the water because I want to start over with the Lord. If that's your desire, I want to invite you to come right now. You can be baptized. Whomever you are, why don't you just step out of your seat and I want you to come right now, whomever you are. This is an opportunity for you to come. I'm inviting you to make that decision. It is, it is a path that I want to encourage you to take. For those that are moving, why don't you put your hands together? God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're here, this is the time to move. God bless you as you come. Praise God for those of you that are moving. If you want to be baptized, you want to transfer your membership, you want to profess your faith, whomever you are, you're making a move. But for those of you that want to be baptized, I'm inviting you to come right now. Just come right now, whomever you are. Don't let anything keep you in your seat. Listen, if there's something telling you to move, it is the spirit of the living God. It is the spirit of God. It is not the devil. It is not yourself. Let's go. Whomever you are, why don't you just come right now? God bless you. All my children shall be taught. For those that are moving in the back, God bless you. Come on, everybody. Clap them to the front. Clap them to the front. Clap them to the front. 
Let's pray to the Lord for these babies now. You pray to the Lord for these children saying, I want to follow his voice. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit does not come in a junior portion. Just come right now. God bless you, gentlemen, as you come. Elders, we may need you to help receive people as they come. The clerks are going to be a little inundated. Whomever you are, why don't you come? Whomever you are, just come. I believe that there's another who wants to be baptized. I'm inviting you to come right now. You're saying, I want to start over. I'm ready to start over. You can't do it on your own. I heard one young man say to me, when I get my life together, I'll come be baptized. My dear friend, you will never get your life to be together because our righteousness is like filthy rags in the presence of the living and loving God. And so if it's your desire to respond to this appeal, there's nothing else that you can do other than say, Lord, if you're accepting me, I'd like to give my life to you. Why don't you just come right now? If you've said, I want to transfer my membership or I want to profess my faith, our clerks are going to get in touch with you this week. I need you to come up here so I can pray with you. If you're saying, I'm going to transfer my membership, I'm going to profess my faith, or I'm going to be baptized, why don't you come? Our brilliant elders are already here to pray with you as you come. I'm asking you to move right now because I got to go. I got to go. You got to go. Y'all got food in the oven. It's on low, but it's going to burn if we stay longer. All y'all going to lift up is burnt offerings, and I want y'all to come. If you're here and the Spirit of God is speaking to you, why don't you just come right now? Whomever you are, just come. You got to move. I see some of you struggling and you're talking back and forth. Let me tell you something. God's got a kingdom for you. That person ain't got nothing for you. Why don't you just come right now? My young brothers, why don't you just come? You're inspired. And you want to move. I got some young brothers here who want to respond. If you're watching online right now, you're saying, if I could, I would. There is a network of members in the Adventist church movement around the world. And no matter where you are, we'd like to make sure we support you. You can be anywhere in the world. If you want to be baptized, we will organize that for you. We'll organize that with you. So why don't you send us a direct message right here on YouTube, leave a comment in the, in the comment section, or send us a direct message on Shiloh's Facebook page where this is also streaming live, and we'll follow up with you this week as we do every single week from our church secretary and our clerk and our hospitality leader. And so I'm having a word of prayer with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, for every decision that was made, we ask that you will secure it in heaven's record and show us how to love. And Lord, I pray that as we read the book of Mark this week, that we will hear your voice in a way we have not heard in a very long time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Somebody say amen. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Look at somebody and say, the Bible is not your rehab. We need the Spirit. Spirit will use the Word of God. There's power in that Word as we follow the Holy Spirit. We're going to go now. Our elder is coming to lead us in our mornings, uh, our afternoons tithe and offer. Did I get you out when I said I would? I did. Make sure you stop in the back and, uh, and, and take pictures with those checks and make sure you post that for Shiloh. Thank you so much, elder. That was good Sabbath school this morning. Good afternoon. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God who is in heaven and we were blessed today because God is faithful and we saw blessings come from God today for this church and for the school and now it's offering time now is the time for us to be faithful to remember that God has been good to you and that he wants to do what he said, let them build me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. And then he said, all my children will be taught of the Lord. This is of God. That's why we're here to do that missionary work of love and service for God in offering. Also, I want to admonish that the most important thing that God did for us is that in 33 and a half years, he gave us eternity. That means God gave us something that is a gift that we all share. And that gift is called time. God wants us not only to give a physical gift, but he wants our time. Every day, God wants us to return time to him. 
because in his storehouse is three things, grace and mercy. And the last thing is time. And I'm going to prove that quickly in Ephesians 5, which says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How many of us need more time like you need more money? It only comes from God. It is a gift. So if you give God all your physical gifts, a tenth and a serviceable blessing will, will come to you. But also if you give God service or your time, he will give you more times in these evil days. So we ask you to give a liberal offering and of your time so that this church and this school will continue in the service of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we know that you are here to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in our gifts and in our time, and then that you will redeem both in us because what Jesus has done. And when you soon return, that we will have a time known as eternity with you. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen. We have an offering basket and we will have deacons coming up and down the aisles to collect. Have a blessed Sabbath. stand for the benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. your attention for just one moment. Those of you that were contacted this week uh, about doing a walk through the facility with Ms. Moore from Child Impact, we will begin that tour at about 1.30. So at 1.30, make your way down to the front so that we can begin that. Thank you.